Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us today, Congressman Gus Belarakis. Um, we are very pleased uh, that you are one of two members from Florida who are speaking at our conference this year. So oh, thank you, uh, thank yeah, you, that's Donna a great honor. Another. So, um, you know, so it's great to have two. So it shows the, uh, the fact that Florida has a lot of seniors and a lot of people Absolutely. in Medicare Advantage maybe, um, but you've been a terrific champion for Medicare Advantage. So we really thank you. Thank you for working with us at BMA as well. And um, so I wanted to just start with sort of a, a question. In your district, you have 54% of uh, Medicare beneficiaries have chosen Medicare Advantage. It's one of the um, highest in the country. It's uh, about 40% nationally, but Florida yeah. is way, way off the charts on this. So yeah. um, it's really great. So let's start with what I think is a basic for, for members of Congress, which is, you know, what do constituents tell you about Medicare Advantage and, uh, you know, why, why it takes you, gets you to be a champion maybe, and maybe for other reasons as well. Well, I will tell you, I, yeah, I've always known that we've had a higher percentage than the average district with regard to Medicare Advantage, but uh, my constituents love it. They absolutely love it. They love the fact that they have choices. Uh, you know, uh, the super sneakers, uh, again, eyeglasses, possibly hearing aids, uh, dental care in some cases, maybe. Uh, you know, what it is, is uh, it, they love the flexibility. Yeah. And and of course, they love the, the price, you know, because it's, it's affordable. affordable. Yeah. And, and the quality of care is, is fantastic. Uh, you know what? I don't think I've ever heard of a constituent that complained about their particular health care under Medicare Advantage. Uh, so it's a wonderful program. And, and now it's become bipartisan mm -hmm. uh, because, uh, you know, uh, members hear from their constituents how pleased they are with the, the Medicare Advantage program. So it's always good to have these choices. There are people, of course, they want to stay on traditional Medicare and that's their right. Mm -hmm. But it's always nice to have options. Absolutely. So it's really been uh, remarkable that there's been this program that these choices can offer some of those extra benefits um, with the, about the government spending more money. It's kind of incredible. So um, yeah, it well, really is. Yeah, it really is. It's really been a, very, a real success story. And you're right. We are very pleased at uh, Better Medicare Alliance that it is bipartisan. Um, we need the support from both Republicans and Democrats. And Absolutely. when you have both, you can get things done. So, you know, right. for the... Uh, uh, the work you've done. Speaking of getting that, you get, getting things done in a bipartisan way, you have are co-sponsoring a bill with Representative Terry Sewell from Alabama uh, to ensure parity in Medicare Advantage for audio-only telehealth. Um, so I want to uh, say telehealth has been extremely important to beneficiaries during this COVID crisis. Um, yes. The ability to get health care to people, uh, keep have, be able to be safe at home, um, but it's been a challenge. Not everybody yep. has the um, wherewithal to right. use video. Here we are on it. Seems like a second hint to us, but still glitches. And but uh, many seniors have chosen audio only. And yes. um, so, tell us about your bill and uh, what your hopes are for it. Well, I I think that uh, you know seniors have again, they may not have an option in this case uh, because they don't have the computer. Uh, and, and also, you know, if they don't have Wi-Fi in rural areas, then they're not be, they, they don't have the opportunity to experience the telehealth. And, uh, you know, from what I understand, and I actually witnessed an appointment uh, just the other day on telehealth, because I wanted to see it with my own eyes, mm -hmm. uh, and I am a great supporter of telehealth. But again, the, you know, the audio is beneficial as well without mm -hmm. the video. And, uh, and I believe that, the, again, this constituents should have a choice if they have one. Otherwise, they don't have another option. And, uh, and you know, getting the appointment, the appointment done, because you have roadblocks, transportation issues, in a lot of cases for seniors and, and folks that are in rural areas that don't have the opportunity, or uh, they really don't have the ability to see their physician one-on-one. -on -one. So I think it's vitally important that we include the uh, the audio, which is yeah, a the default cause. Right, and that, was say, this is in particular concern for Medicare Advantage because it's required to get, um, to identify the risks and to give a risk score for, um, right. for, um, for each of their beneficiaries every year. So if someone has 
had only audio only calls, they can't use that data from that visit to say this person still has diabetes or this person yeah. still has a cardiac disease. Um, and so that's what your bill would do, would allow, um, particularly during the pandemic period, to be able to use that information gained from those visits uh, to be kept, to be used. It's to vital, vitally important. Vitally important. It is kind of one yeah. of the basis of the payments for Medicare Advantage. So we appreciate it and happy to help you um, sure, of work course. on that. That's for sure. So this may be a sensitive question, but I did want to ask, obviously there's a, a case in the Supreme Court um, uh, around the ACA um, and uh, very much concerns from people out there about whether this will be struck down in its entirety. It may not be. We obviously don't know what the Supreme Court will We're do. We're not sure yet. Not sure, but, so, but I do know that there are a lot of parts of the ACA that uh, Republicans and Democrats agree on. So what do you think happens should the whole court, whole, the whole, actually the whole bill, you know, the whole yeah. act, you know, be, I'm sorry, the, the law be struck down and provisions that in fact, um, members of Congress of both parties say they are for. Um, Pre-existing condition protections obviously is is very, is key um, as are many other um, parts. Yeah, of I, I, no matter who is in power at the time. Uh, so even if, you know, my party takes over in January or let's say that uh, the Democratic Party still has the House uh, or the Senate for that matter, we really don't know uh, exactly what's gonna happen. Uh, I believe that there'll be the first bill uh, will be a bill if it's struck down, if the law is struck down completely. Uh, there will, I think we'll have a piece of legislation that will pass both the House and the Senate and it will include uh, pre-existing conditions, making sure that uh, people are not discriminated against based on pre-existing conditions. Uh, and I also think the essential benefits will be there too. And, and some of these provisions that are very good for seniors, uh, you know, we wanna make sure that you have that STAR program in there as well to retain, quality program, quality to make sure the quality, and, yeah, quality definitely, quality. yeah. Yeah, and yeah. want to make sure these plans are good to protect seniors. So, yeah, I think that we'll have a bipartisan bill, uh, and, and uh, I look forward to it. Now, you know, the ACA has been controversial, and uh, and a lot of the premiums are, are too high. People cannot afford them. But there are some good provisions in there that we can all agree on. That's great. Well, we do appreciate your support for the provisions in there about Medicare Advantage. I mean, that's never to call, it's not a big conversation out there in the in the public sphere, but it, it did set up the, the star rating program yeah. and the quality bonus payments, and that's been hugely successful. Sure, and years, you know it was it was really about twenty six percent of beneficiaries were in high quality plans, four and five star plans, and now eighty one percent of beneficiaries are in high quality plans. Yeah, we don't we don't mess with success. <laughs> <That's>, okay. <laughs> well, I like to think of that. Um, um, so last question. Um, you also introduced the Medicare Abuse Prevention Act, uh, which would protect seniors' personal information. Um, yeah. uh, and uh, from uh, by removing the social security numbers, which has been done, it's been, it, it has been done, but it shows your interest in uh, in protecting seniors from scams and, and uh, obviously identity theft. So um, open enrollment begins uh, in October 15th for Medicare to be able to have seniors and those with disabilities on Medicare make their choice of Medicare yeah. or fee for, traditional fee-for-service uh, Medicare. So what advice do you have to seniors about making sure that they get advice um, from trusted sources? Um, yeah. you know, and, uh, and protect themselves uh, as well so they can make the best choice for themselves. Yeah, well, I wouldn't give out your social security number. I wouldn't give out your Medicare number, uh, any personal information, unless you're absolutely sure that this is a person that you know that is credible, such as your physician, what have you. Uh, and uh, you got to be very careful these days. But you gave me an uh, you gave me an idea because every week we have these, uh, we used to have teletown halls, which would bring us 50 to 60,000 people. A lot of it was uh, regarding COVID at the mm -hmm. time, but now I'm prohibited from doing the teletown halls until after the election. But we do Facebook Live and we have a lot of guests uh, on that Facebook Live. Last week we did it on the, the vaccine, uh, which I think we'll have a vaccine hopefully before the end of the year. 
uh, with regard to COVID. But that's a good thing. I've always done identity theft uh, seminars, how to prevent identity theft. But I should do a Facebook Live uh, mm -hmm. for seniors, specifically for seniors, uh, with regard to the, the open uh, enrollment and, and the protections. Absolutely. Uh, so I, I practiced law um, before I got into politics. Uh, and I did a lot of elder law. So uh, I, I'm used to working with seniors and I love it. Okay. And actually BMA has a, a, a guide that your office can use um, that just oh, gives beautiful. some basic information and we'll make sure to get beautiful. that to you. Um, Absolutely, that would be choices. great. Because it's confusing. In fact, we have some, yeah. we're doing some work on how we can make this easier for seniors. Sure particularly on their first enrollment when they're not sure what to do. So we'll talk about I don't that blame them. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't know what to do really either. Hey, well, so. you, there are agents and brokers, there's ship <laughs> counselors. I'm, like, all, I'm getting <laughs> there. I'm, I'm almost there. So you can but, call uh, me up, yeah. you know, we'll talk about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's really true. It's really a complicated system and it doesn't. It is complicated. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but we want to make it easier for them. So uh, no, no, no. Thanks for having me today. And I'll continue to advocate on behalf of our seniors. Wonderful. And thank you for your support for Medicare Advantage. My pleasure. With us.